Good morning. Big Joe here, along with Jeff Rickard for The Morning Show. And we just wanted to make sure that you know to rise and shine with our new FM frequencies only on 93.5 and 107.5 The Fan. We're already moved in. Come on over and have a listen. Michael Grady joins us now. Uh, of course, one of the greats all time at uh, 107.5 The Fan and 1070 The Fan. Now working for the Yes Network in New York. You can hear him oftentimes on NBA radio. I've heard him on ESPN. Who are you not working for these days, Michael? First of all, thanks for being here, buddy. But where are you all these days? Uh, in, in the New York area right now. In the New York Sounds area. Sounds good. Sounds good. So, crazy couple of days uh not only in the country but in new york as well and i know stuff happened in brooklyn last night what's been going on around your place and around what what you've been dealing with uh well i mean very similar to what's um happening around the country and really around the world and there's a lot of mixed emotions with everything and um it's warming my heart to see so many people coming together Um, for this cause. And uh, there are a lot of people that are tired of saying enough is enough and something needs to be done about it and something needs to be done about it now. Um, Action steps need to be taken. And so to see people in the streets around the country and again around the world um, standing together uh, of all different Shades, all different hues, all coming from all different walks of life, young, old, is encouraging, and uh, the momentum uh, has to continue. And so um, uh, that's been the case in Brooklyn. It's been the case where I'm at in Jersey City. It's been the case in Omaha, Lincoln, Nebraska, Boise, Idaho, um, of course, in Indianapolis. But um, in my lifetime, I haven't seen anything like this. And um, it's really important that we come together. Uh, It's important that we are uh, careful with our words. It is important that we listen. It is important that we have uncomfortable conversations um, and uncomfortable conversations with people who walk um, uh, that, that may walk a different path than you, that may look different than you, that may come from a different background than, than you. And uh, these are the types of things that um, can influence and impact uh, an empathetic heart and help with understanding, help with education during this time um, so that we can so that we can really expand expand our reach and really help and impact true progress. And so there's still a lot of work left to, left to be done. Um, there's a lot of ugliness um, uh, within, the, within the past few days and what's going on. But I feel like, I truly feel in my heart that we are taking a step and ultimately taking a step in the right direction and we're going to bring about real change. MG, you and I, we've, we've had these discussions before on the show. We've disagreed on things before, and we were able to, you know, we're always able to, you know, arm in arm and whatever else, uh, you know, figure it out and find some common ground in that. Um, when, you know, when you moved away and you're in New York now and everything, I, I, I can't imagine what it was like because you know this town, you grew up here and everything, and your your mom is a big part of this community and being a public servant and everything that she does. Um, I can only imagine, you know, what, what you were thinking when you saw pictures of Indianapolis and some of the things that were going on here? The, the main thing that I saw, and um, uh, yes, I, I, Indianapolis, I love you. Um, uh, my heart is still there. My family is still there. Um, friends are still there. Colleagues are still there. Um, my heart is still very much in Indianapolis, it's, um, I know it has to be difficult, you know, for you or anybody driving into work in downtown Indianapolis and passing establishments where you stopped in for a sandwich, stopped in for um, uh, a drink, a burger, whatever it may be, and seeing the windows shattered, the buildings boarded up. Um, that has to be uncomfortable. It has to be upsetting to see, and it would be upsetting to me. And I'll be in. I'll, I, I plan on being in the city very soon. 
Um, that said, windows can be replaced. Um, doors can be replaced. Um, these things can be replaced. Um, what sparked all of this is a life that was taken that should not have been taken away. And there are far too many George Floyds and examples of situations like that where lives have been taken away. So, yes, if I was passing by the CVS that I was, you know, would go to on that on on the corner on uh, on Delaware. Yeah, I would be disappointed in seeing what happened. Um, I am not condoning looting or rioting nor am I lumping those who are creating unrest in the streets with the millions of people around the country and around the world who are peacefully protesting a very important cause. So, um, yes, I, um, I, the way I feel is that this is a very important cause and it's something that I don't want to lose sight of. Um, we can do both. We can condemn those who are creating unrest and violence in the street while not losing sight of the real uh, of what we are protesting uh, and what we are trying to and, and the change that we are trying to bring to bring about. And um, I feel like a lot of people feel that way. I think that we're we're tired of the distractions that come about because there's anytime there are protests and peaceful protests, there are distractions out there that take away from the message. And so people are don't like the unrest in the street and the talks about the violence and things like that, which again, it's fine to condemn. But we can do both. But the talk about all that takes away from the talk about the cause. A distraction. Kneeling for a national anthem, which has been back into the conversation today. When I was on the radio there in Indy with you, there was frustration because as much as I was trying to and other people were trying to talk about the movement and what players like our own Darius Butler and Stephen Holder had a great piece of Darius Butler in The Athletic today. Players like Darius Butler and, of course, Kaepernick sparking it all. The call, what they were trying to shed light on was getting overshadowed by, is it disrespectful to kneel at the national anthem? Is it disrespecting the flag? Is it this, that, or whatever? And, and people completely ignored the issue. It was a convenient distraction over what so many were trying to shed light on. And it's sad that it's taken another, another death, another senseless death, uh, an eight-minute and 46-second video for people to go, oh, oh, that's neither here or there. At this point, at this point, the people who are on board, the people who are starting to have uncomfortable conversations, the people who are... I, 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 I get it. Now, the people who see themselves or someone that they know in George Floyd, the people who are marching in the streets, peacefully protesting, let's keep the momentum going. Let's spread that the, the, the knowledge that you're getting, the, uh, the understanding that you are now having. Let's spread that to others that, with that, that may not completely understand the issues. And it's extreme. Yeah, trust me, I get it. It's extremely difficult. It's, it's, it's living everyday life is tough enough as it is. Waking up, going to work, doing your job, taking care of your family. That's tough as it is. I'm asking people to also find it in your heart to reach out to someone who does not look like you and get an understanding of their experience. Get an understanding of where they come from. It may be very different than yours. It may be very uncomfortable. You may be shocked by what you hear. And, it is, and it's happening 
a lot. I, I appreciate, and I'm not going to say any, any names because they don't, they're not doing it for the recognition, but I appreciate colleagues that I've worked with there in that building at Emmis who have reached out to me, said, hey, Grady, how you doing? What's your take on this? And they listened. I had an hour-long conversation over the weekend with a colleague, with a colleague that, um, and I cherish that friendship about my experience, experiences of those close to me. And he just listened. And it's an uncomfortable conversation. But this is where, you know, true empathy is born. It's so easy to, to go to work and work in a place where people predominantly look like you, go back to a neighborhood where people predominantly look like you, and then feel comfortable letting that mold your opinion about the world. And if we're going to show, and if we're going to have true empathy for others, we need to have conversations with people who do not look like us. Because if we don't, it makes it very easy to have device to make divisive comments and say things that may divide a a community, a city, a state, and a country in a world. We need to listen. We need to have these conversations. We need to read things that may make us uncomfortable. We need to watch things that may make us uncomfortable so we can truly understand different people's experiences. And again, I want to applaud and I, I want to encourage people to continue to do that. I want to encourage people to do that if they have it, because it's not too late. I want to I want to thank the people who are out in the streets who understand the cause. And I'm not going to simply say that these people are going to, you know, just drop off when this whole thing is over or stop caring. I'm going to encourage you to continue, even when the protests and things die down, continue to put yourself in uncomfortable position, uh, uh, positions and, and have uncomfortable conversations, because none of this is easy. But this country has an ugly past, and a lot of what people experience is ugly. And it is very therapeutic for people who have been the victims of oppression or harassment or racial profiling or excessive force, or sexual harassment, or whatever it may be, to be able to open up to someone who has an empathetic ear, who wants to learn, who wants to gain understanding. It's easy to say, hey, hey, man, how you doing? Hey, how you doing? And the person, oh, I'm, I, you know, I'm good. Take it a step further. No, really, how are you doing? Ask about their experiences, experiences themselves and those close to them. We can't shape our opinions based off of a small circle. We need to expand it. We have to expand it. And through that, we'll get a better understanding of the sadness that you see people have on television or that you may see on the street, the pain that people are feeling, the anger that people are feeling. There are a lot of emotion. There are a lot of raw emotions out there. There are a lot of raw emotions out there. It is not too late. Call someone today. Reach out to someone today. Let them know that you care. Have a conversation. Listen. There are a lot of people hurting. And I want you, I want everyone who doesn't have a full understanding to make an effort to understand why. Well said, Michael Grady, joining us here on the Fan Morning Show, Jeff and Big Joe. And, Michael, so many tragic things have, have led up to this, and things have been happening even in the midst of all of this. And here in Indianapolis, the sports world is, is grieving the loss of Chris Beatty, uh, former IU player, and we're still trying to figure out exactly what happened. All we do know is that he was close to his home, and he was trying to help people out. And in trying to help people out, was was murdered. 
Uh, did you know Chris at all, or were you aware of, of his his presence while you were here? Chris was a um, uh, a good friend. Chris was um, an ambassador for the city. He loved Indianapolis. Always had a smile on his face. Um, I'm I, uh, I'm I'm truly saddened. Um, uh, I'm truly saddened by what happened with Chris. Um, uh, it's a, a senseless death, and I I. Um, I want, you know, I want, as many people do, the truth and what happened. I want justice and what happened to Chris. And I think um, I know in my heart what Chris would want is for us to continue the momentum on the things that we've been talking about, on the discussions that are being had. Um, he was someone that uh, had an ambition that really inspired me. I know that there have been a lot of stories about Chris and things floating around. This is just... Uh, and if I'm echoing, I know I'm echoing what a lot of people have said, but I just want to to say that his ambition inspired me, his hustle inspired me, his grace inspired me. I said, I mentioned to um, uh, Zach Osterman, who wrote the piece in the paper, that he's someone who always gave flowers while people could still smell them. They say people don't do that enough, right? Um, Chris, always when he would see you, would tell you that he appreciates you, man. You're doing it. You're doing this. You, you know, I'm I'm proud of you. The last two times I saw him, we we both we told each other that we were proud of each other. Um, uh, I I knew I knew Chris for the better part of uh, 12 years. Um, the last time I saw him was on the field at Lucas Oil Stadium before the Colts Jaguars game um, that I was working for CBS, and. Um, uh, and we just ex- we embraced and expressed how proud we were of each other, and so um, um, I love him. I love his family. He touched so many people, and uh, I'm I'm truly, truly, truly saddened um, by his by his loss. Um, once again, to to uh, senseless violence. So there's um, there's a lot that needs to change. Um, we need to keep the momentum uh, going. And um, I, um, I know that I know that we will all continue to honor um, honor Chris. And I and there are things that are circulating. I know uh, Laura Overton, a good friend of ours, she posted some things from the uh, from the family and where people can stay updated. And, and I, I hope people do that. Sports always plays such a big part in healing processes and getting things going. Uh, do you think there'll be uh, maybe? You know, we're we're trying to get everything together. It looks like the NBA with the meeting that they'll have tonight with the Board of Governors, they they'll be able to get back on track here. Uh, do you think it maybe helps with uh, with baseball? Do you think it helps with some of these other sports to know the healing process they can have and maybe they put their own differences aside, and we can get uh, players and owners and everything to come together for the common good in this way? Um, no, I don't. I don't. I don't think um, those things will provide a distraction um, for sure. And I think for some people, a welcome distraction. But in terms of the change and and changing hearts and the things that we're talking about, um, watching guys play basketball in Orlando or baseball come into agreement and getting back at it, hockey coming, you know, returning or seeing NFL football, that's not going to do anything to for for reform, um, or it's not going to do anything for bringing awareness and, and putting an end to harassment on the streets or racial profiling or excessive force and things of that nature. Um, it will provide a distraction, and um, right now I don't want to be distracted. Um, right now. I, I want to um, continue to peacefully protest. I want to continue to learn. I want to continue to educate myself. I want to continue to have conversations. And I want to continue to apply pressure so that 
um, um, the types of things that we saw with George Floyd never happen again, um, period. Uh, and so it, will, it can provide a distraction, but I don't, again, I don't want a distraction right now. I want change, and many of um, your listeners want change. And uh, I can't express enough, again, how heartwarming it is across the country to see so many different people from different walks of life coming together and saying that they want change. And um, um, I don't know who won the NBA championship or who won, you know, the World Series during the, uh, during the sit-in. I have, I have no idea um, um, when when true change occurred in this world. I'm not sure. I can't off the top of my head say what happened in the sports world. Uh, sports can do so much. It can unite. I'm not diminishing that in any way, shape, or form. Um, but LeBron, you know, winning the championship with the Lakers um, will have no impact on um, what happens in the streets uh, until we until we continue to apply pressure and bring about change and continue to work to unite, understand each other, uh, understand where we come from, being empathetic to each other, being loving to each other. Um, uh, that's that's what we need, and that's what so many are going to continue to fight for. Um, my whole life, my whole my career has been built around sports, so you know my feelings um, about that and the games, and of course that's I, I continue to work in that in that field. Um, but something very powerful is happening in this country, and um, and uh, we don't want to be distracted um, from uh, from the cause. Michael, thank you. Thank, thanks for being here, and thanks for uh, saying the things that you've said. And like I said, all we, it's just up to us to listen and try and learn, and we appreciate you, man. That, that's all I can say. Thank you so much for being here and saying what you said. Thanks, guys. It's Michael Grady, uh, now working at the Yes Network, CBS. He, I mean, he, he literally has gone on to, to greater things and will continue to do great things, and uh, something that, that we wanted to hear for a couple of days, and Michael had time to, and, and opportunity to join us today, and I'm glad that he did, Joe. I'm yeah. Glad that he did. Always good to hear his voice and uh, obviously the, the feeling in his voice because, you know, he, he believes very, very deeply in this community and, and uh, obviously this uh, this country and everything. And, and uh, no, he, he's a great guy, great human being, and very well thought out on, uh, you know, on, on every time he, he speaks. You know, it's uh, uh, it's a, a pleasure to know MG, and you know he'll continue to do good things. That's why he is a, a you know, a, a shooting star right now. But um, yeah, no, a lot a lot of uh, words there to uh, to think about and to digest, and and like he said, uh, you know, be inspired by, not just today, not just yesterday, and uh, this is months from now. Yeah. You know, I always say, too, we know what we think and what our opinions are, whatever they happen to be and wherever you're coming at this this particular subject from. We, we all know ourselves and what we think, but that's not what's important right now. What's important is to listen to what other people think right now and not just chime back with, well, yeah, well, but this, but that or this thing or that. Sometimes it's better to just just as it is with with marital relationships, Joe, we all know this sometimes. You just listen and you try to figure out where they're coming from. And I think that's one of those times right now. It's just it's just to listen and to understand where people are coming from, to truly try and understand where they're coming from and not instinctively like we all want to do go. But yeah, but right now is not time for yeah, buts. right now it's time to listen.